<laughs> it makes me laugh every single time. Me okay, too. we go through the world of sports, we hear what people say, and then we see what Swagoo says. We start with the Browns. They fell to two and five after a bad loss to the Patriots Sunday, featuring usual sloppiness, 13 penalties, three turnovers. Here was Baker Mayfield after the game on the Browns' struggles. It's non-discipline. Guys not being focused on doing their job. Uh, it starts first and foremost with me uh, to be a leader every single down. Like I said, we pointed out the problem. Now we have to execute it on Sundays. Uh, once again, I feel like we had a great week of practice. We just didn't translate it. So that's what Baker said. What does Swagoo say? I say, Baker Mayfield, I would love to get you. But I'm not, because you're right, and it's on you, Bake. I appreciate you coming out and saying that first step to recovery is admitting you got a problem. And Baker did that. We have a problem, and it starts with me. That's leadership, Bake. That is what everybody's looking for from you, Baker Mayfield. I, I'm so glad to hear you say that. This is a guy who has talked a lot about a lot of other people. Yes. In this case, he talked about himself. Next stop is Deshaun Watson. Made one of the great plays of the entire season with his game-winning touchdown against the Raiders, a play in which he got kicked in the eye after the game. Both Watson and John Gruden talked about the play. Kind of threw it blind, but I kind of assumed where he was going and kind of adjusted and let my arm got it, and then I didn't even see the play until after the game. What do you want me to say? I mean, you know, you, you see Michael Jordan, you see – you know, some of the great athletic plays in any sport, you got to tip your hat to the guy. That's what they say. What does Swagoo say? First, I ain't no Mike Tyson play football. <laughs> Second, Deshaun Watson is the GOAT. He can play blind. All right, well, this dude done, done everything this season. Mine is playing blind. Gee, he did it. Somebody <laughs> finally did it. There's hope. There's hope that the GOAT can actually play without seeing. Matter of fact, that's a prerequisite now. If you ain't blind and playing and balling out, we can't consider you the GOAT. <laughs> Period. Remember when Michael Jordan closed his eyes at the free throw line? Uh -huh. You got to play blind to be the GOAT. Listen, we talk about Patrick Mahomes with a no-look pass. No look. He's taking it to a whole nother level. Look, G. He wasn't looking because he couldn't look. Right there. I'm with you. All right, next up are the Broncos. They lost a tight game to the Colts on Sunday. And after the game, Joe Flacco sounded off on the offensive game plan. We're now a 2-6 and six football team. And we're like afraid to go for it in a two-minute drill, you know? Like who cares if you give the ball back to the guys with a minute and 40 seconds left? They obviously got the field goal anyway. And once again, we're a 2-6 and six football team. And it just feels like... We're kind of afraid to lose a game. Well, that's what he said. What does Swagoo say? <laughs> ah, thank you, Joe Flacco, for this Tuesday. My OC sucks, <laughs> and I suck. But we ain't talking about my, me right now. We're talking about my OC, who's scared to go for it, probably because we ain't going to convert it. But ain't nobody worried about all that. My OC is scared. We in Denver. Elway's supposed to be making all the right calls. We are terrible especially at the quarterback position. I think I'm quarterback number 19, and he still won't call a play. So there you go. There you have it. Joe Flacco ain't scared. The OC scared, but Joe Flacco sucks, so that would make the OC scared. Now, there is a corollary to this story, and that is that Flacco, after making those comments, all of a sudden yesterday has a neck injury and may be done for the season. L. Duncan has a theory on how he suffered a neck injury during a post-game press conference. L, if you would, please. Here's potentially how it could go down. Center me up. I mean, how I look at it, like, Ooh. we two and six, and we finna just not go for it. We afraid to lose a game? I mean, we, sc we scared to lose a game just because we out here just trying to play scared and everything? Like, no, I don't like it. So I... See, now all of a sudden his neck is injured, and that's exactly Done what happened. Done for the season. That's it. I and snapped that, my neck plenty. That is how Joe Flacco wound up being out for the year with a neck injury that, that he suffered Can't you see him during doing a press That conference. is how you trainers should show up for your players. <laughs> too, by the way. Okay, very well done. Let's move on to our next item of business here, shall we? And that is Chicago. Despite another rough outing in Sunday's loss to the Chargers, Bears coach Matt Nagy said yesterday his team is sticking with Mitchell Trubisky as the starting quarterback. Nagy is confident there's enough time for Trubisky to turn things around. Is there still time left in this season to get him playing the way that you need him to play? Yes, there is. And, and we, we understand that, that this is a, as a unit right now, um, we didn't get to win, but we felt like there was definitely an improvement. So um, we're going we're gonna to make sure that we just keep our nose to the grind. We stay positive. 
We stay really positive because that's who we are. And the only thing we can focus on at three and four right now is Philadelphia. Okay, so that's certainly, I mean, the mood in Chicago, for those of you who follow it, has turned completely on the quarterback and on the team. Do you feel like the issues you see there are, have risen to the level of a divorce or can we still go for counseling? Yeah, no, 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 no. You are married to Mitchell Trubisky right now. And to your point, Greeny, like, it, when times get tough, and that first type of or first sign of adversity, you don't get divorced. We got to go to counseling. Mm -hmm. We got to go to counseling because when you go to counseling, you figure out how to support your your partner, what how to value your partner, what your partner likes and what your partner doesn't like. Like me, Greeny, my wife likes watching reality television, so I got to watch some reality television. I, we, my wife, she likes to talk, Dan, not talk. Stay on top there, please. Not We're talk, talking about Mitch Trubisky. Talk. I understand there are issues. It, it, so you, but but you, got, you got to figure out what Mitch Trubisky likes and doesn't like. So like it, you got to go figure out how to support Mitch Trubisky. You got to figure out how to value Mitch Trubisky. You don't just get divorced because that first sign of adversity is showing up. Was I the only one who felt like that was a moment that might have been about something else? I don't know. But either way, I go ahead. Just, I was scared Ms. Orlovsky was going to be Watch it. Hey, here's the deal. You put them in counseling. Now, I'm not a big proponent of divorce, but sometimes it's over. Yeah. Right? It's not over right now, G. And I know what the expectation is for the swaggoo to say that. But here's the deal. Mr. Trubisky right now has lost confidence. You know what you do for your partner when they lose confidence? You reassure them that you got their back. Mm -hmm. You reassure them that we in this thing together, and that's what Nagy is doing. Now, with that being said, all right, got to be careful. Because if you do stay married and they don't get any better, <laughs> yeah. The house start falling apart. Oh, what's and when mine the is, house start falling apart. Which mine is yours? Which was, yours? Yeah. You start separating your items. And when your items get separated, that's when everything falls apart. All right, and, let me, and first of all, first of all, when, when you're in there and divorce come up, you already got too many damn problems. So counseling. Let is me the take next this step. to legit yeah. what needs to happen Please. for the divorce not to happen, for them to go to counseling and then this marriage to flourish. They need to play two minute offense all the time. They need to get a two-minute offense all the time, spread the field out, let them get on the edges, and play a little bit of a non-traditional way. Yeah. They do that, counseling will be a success, and they can celebrate a 10-year anniversary not long from now. I love Dan. Yeah. But in other words, divorce is inevitable. Yeah, it, it feels imminent. And the problem is it was an arranged marriage in the first place because that what they gave up to get him and all the rest of that, they're not moving on until there's absolutely no other option. That's our football.